In today's how-to video, we're going to feature the Canon XA30, a run-and-gun style camera. We're also going to go through the procedures of what to do at checkout when picking up your equipment to ensure that you have everything you need and it's in operating condition. Once we do that, we're going to show how to assemble the XA30, putting the battery in, the SD card, and mounting it onto the tripod. After that, we're going to go over the optimized settings for shooting HD video. Let's get started. All of the equipment that you check out in the mirror will come in protective cases with labels and barcodes. This helps us track the equipment. Remember, it's your responsibility to check the case contents to make sure that everything is there and it's in working condition. Let's check out what's inside the case of the Canon XA30. The Canon XA30 is a run and gun style camera. You can see right away that the manual and the case contents card is sitting directly on top of the components. A run and gun style camera or an ENG electronic news gathering or EFP electronic field production camera can be controlled by one individual. Let's check and see what's inside the case. The Canon XA30 says it has the camera body, a lens cap slash hood, two large batteries, a charger, a 32 gig SD card, and a manual. Let's make sure all that stuff is in the case. Here's our manual. You can see that when I open the case that everything seems to have a home in here. That's important that it kind of goes back in the condition and in the placement that you found it. It helps protect the gear. Here's the camera body. You'll notice the camera body has a top handle, it has the hood around the lens and a little shutter that opens and closes. The top handle allows for XLR inputs for extra microphones as well as an onboard shoe mount here for a shotgun mic. Pretty nice. The XA30 is a little older now. They're up to the XA45, but still a great workhorse, especially for those shooting documentary style films. That's the camera body. We have two batteries, larger batteries. Remember to make sure that if you need the batteries charged, to put that in a note to the checkout center staff so that your batteries can be charged. Don't assume that they will be. Here's the charger. And kind of buried in the case, we snuggle the SD card into this little slot, and there's your SD card. Everything is labeled based on what the camera number is, and it seems to be there. Okay, remember to actually put the batteries in and turn the camera on and make sure it's doing what it needs to do. With that said, let's assemble the camera. Now that we checked the case contents and made sure everything was there, let's assemble the camera. We'll open the case up. We'll take out the manual and the case contents card, the camera body. We only need one battery and the SD card. I'm going to go ahead and take the card out of the plastic protective case, stick that back in. Remember, I tend to just throw things back in, not throw. We tend to put things, right, back into the case so they have a home on set and we don't leave anything. So before I even put the battery in, I'm gonna go ahead and put the card in the camera. In the camera here, this is a flip out LCD screen. Really nice, it turns and you can even stow it back on itself for manually operating the camera while it's running. There's a door here that opens up and accepts two SD cards. They're hot swappable and they, they relay. We're going to put this into card slot B and then we're going to shut the door. Okay, so we just put our card into the camera and making sure that the door is shut or the camera will throw up an error message saying that the card is not properly seated into the camera. On the back side of the camera is where the battery goes. You can see that there's a a little arrow and it's also tagged with the Canon logo so that we know that goes up. All right, and it slides up until you hear the click. The battery's on the camera, the SD card's on the camera. It does have a 
fixed variable zoom lens, so it's not interchangeable. It stays connected to the camera body, okay? We have just assembled the XA30. Now that we have the camera assembled, let's mount it onto our tripod. Remember, again, all the equipment that you check out from the mirror comes in cases with tags. This particular tripod is a two-stage tripod. It's an e-image. It has a pan handle and a fluid head. This tripod also has security straps inside to keep it from moving around while traveling. So we're gonna take the tripod out, okay? You saw that I took those, case, those straps off. We're gonna set the case aside, all right? One of the important things that we don't ever wanna forget when we're checking out is that the plate is on the tripod. Without that little piece right there, you can't mount your camera, so make sure it's there, okay? This particular tripod has a spreader also in the center. I'm gonna set this down off the table, push that spreader down a little bit, release the knobs, and I'm gonna lift the head just so you guys can see that it comes up above the table. I'm gonna lock the legs down. Remember, I'm looking at my little level bubble on the back to get it right in the center. And that looks good for right now. I'm gonna release the pan handle a little bit and turn it to the outward position. We do that so it stows properly in the case. And then I'm gonna loosen this knob in the front to allow it to pan around to the front of the space. There's a knob on the side here. Remember, all of the heads have particular knobs so that you can tilt or increase the drag. And again, you can open this up right in the front here to pan, moving left or right, okay? Now that we have the tripod level, let's remove the plate so we can mount the camera. So in order to do that, we release this knob on the right side of the head. Remember, all tripods have their own method for releasing the plate. So make sure you know which method works for which tripod you have. We're gonna press in the little safety button and pull the plate out of the back of the tripod, releasing it from the head. There's a little screw on the plate, and that screw is gonna go into the 920 insert on the bottom of your camera, okay? So I'm gonna thread that in by hand just to get it going. Then I'm gonna take my handy dandy little tool. Mine is a key that I keep on a keychain for this purpose. Comes in handy and other things. Remember to secure this tightly onto the camera body because you're only as stable as this plate is to your rig or to your tripod in this case. Now that we have the tripod plate securely mounted onto the camera, let's mount the camera onto the tripod. You'll notice that it's got a, a specific design so it slides in through these grooves on the back of the head into the top of the tripod until you hear that safety engage. And then we're gonna lock it down by turning this knob right here all the way down. That secures your camera to the tripod. Now that we have mounted our camera onto the tripod, let's get into the settings to optimize it for shooting HD. A couple things before we get started with that. Let's go over some of the buttons. I'm gonna tilt this down so you can see the top of the camera. You'll notice that I have my tripod at a lower level so that I can navigate all the buttons without having to get up on something or to bend down to do it, okay? So get that right and it'll make it a little easier on you. You'll notice on the left side of the camera that there's a camera mode, an off mode, and a media mode. The camera mode is what you wanna be in when you're shooting. When you wanna review your footage, you go into the media mode to review that or to delete or just simply make notes, okay? So you have those functions on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side of the camera, you'll notice that green auto, then an M and a cinema. The auto mode is for auto control, and we're gonna stay away from that because we want manual control 
and that's going to give you full control over all aspects of the camera and you're really going to want that. And then cinema mode is some built-in effects and we're going to stay away from that too. So let's turn the camera on by sliding the switch into camera mode. All right, I'm going to bring the camera back up and I'm going to pan it around so you can see what I see. I'm going to lock that head back down. There we go. I'm going to open up the LCD screen here. And this is a touch screen. It allows us to navigate all the deep menus within the camera for setting it up properly. All right. So one of the first things I tell students is that this is kind of, I don't want to say flimsy, but easy to break. And it's $250 to repair. So take it easy on it. All right. So we're going to go into the function mode right here. Okay. Then we're going to go hit the menu button and this takes you to the deep menus of setting up the camera. There's three different tabs here, a wrench, okay, for your tools. And this is a film icon to get your film settings properly and some more camera settings that you're going to want to get into. That's how we turn the camera on. And now let's get into setting up the camera. Open up the LCD screen, it's a touch screen, and you'll see a display that comes on, it looks like this. You get a lot of information from frame rate to how much time is left on the battery, how much space is left on the card, all that good information that you wanna see. Hit the function button, and you'll notice it takes you to a menu area where you have control over white balance, manual control, audio levels, a bunch of other really important areas to navigate the camera. If we hit the menu again, it's gonna take us into the deeper menus of this camera. You have a camera icon, a film icon, and a wrench. In the film icon, the center tab, we're gonna go down to the bottom because one of the first things I want you to do is to initialize your SD card. If you press on that initialize button, it'll take you to the area where the card is in the camera. And we notice that this is in slot A. And then we're gonna hit the initialize button at the bottom of the screen. And it'll bring us up to a kind of warning. Are you sure you wanna do this? And then we're gonna hit the yes button to start the process. Once we hit the yes button, you'll see that a complete initialization memory card A, it's in process, you get a little indicator bar. And once that's complete, it'll say process successful and you hit the OK button. X out of that menu and it brings you back to the main display area on the LCD. Let's go in and look at a couple of the other tabs after we have now successfully initialized our SD card. The first camera icon tab here in the deep menus gives you a lot of areas where you can go in and set different parameters from the digital zoom on or off, the speed of the zoom itself. You can go in and change the autofocus mode from instant to various other parameters. You can see that you can control all the different audio functionality here as well. And as we move over to the center film icon, the movie format is a very important area. That's gonna tell you what codec you're gonna use when you're recording. We tend to try to record at the largest file type and bit rate possible, and that's that ABC HD codec. It's a highly compressed codec at 24 megabits per second. The MP4 is a thinner file. Great if you just wanna videotape something and throw it right up to one of your social feeds because it's an H.264 format. Now that we've chosen AVC HD, let's go into the recording mode and choose our bit rate. So we're going to keep it locked in at 24 megabits per second. Then once we've done that, of course, we want to make sure that where is this going and we're going to choose whichever media card slot we want. Next is our frame rate. We're going to lock it in at 2398. And that P is for progressive. That's our 24 frames per second. We can go in and play around with other areas within this particular menu if we needed to. The other menu, the wrench, is kind of your tools. And this gives you kind of some setup functionality where you can control the level of your headphones, control over HDMI, the response between your focus ring, other different things that are something more 
customizable, say this was your own personal camera. That's a quick overview of those three tabs. Now that we're in the main display area, let's hit function again. Then we're gonna go into the programs area. We're gonna to touch the M and that's our manual exposure area. And you'll notice if I touch it again, we get all the parameters that we really wanna have control over. You can see here when it's orange, it's highlighted and active. That's our f-stop. You can see that the higher we go, it's closing down the aperture. The smaller the number, the more wide open, the more light is into your sensor. That one over 48 is how many times the shutter will open. For us, remember, shooting at 24 frames per second, we multiply the 24 by two and that gives us our shutter speed. That's that 148. The zero dB area here refers to gain. That is somewhat synonymous with ISO. If you're familiar from the DSLR that we demonstrated previously, this controls light into your sensor. It's a built-in low light enhancer, so to speak. So the more you go up on the gain, the more light you can get if you need it into your image for proper exposure. I caution you to stay low on your gain as much as possible and work your f-stop because if you don't you can be introducing noise or artifacts into the darker regions of your image. So keep this low, preferably zero, but don't ever really go over 16 on this particular model. Then you'll notice over here that other wrench that I just tapped on, that's a zebra, and you'll see that actually in your display. It doesn't print in your final picture, but it gives you a visual of where your hotter exposed or overexposed areas in the frame reside. So you have a visual indicator and be able to kind of knock down the exposure based on your zebra. Again, starting at neutral in our main display area, we're gonna hit the function button which takes us into the menu area and we're gonna to touch the white balance area. We had it currently set at AWB for the auto white balance, but you can see all the other presets. You can even adjust it manually based on the color temperature. Remember this is in Kelvin's degrees. So the lower ranges, the 28 to 32 is indoor or tungsten, the 5500 to 6500 is more of your outdoor color temperature. So you can manually, if you know that Kelvin degree color temperature using a light meter or something, then you can dial that in. But we're also gonna be working with how to custom white balance where we put a white card in front, we go in here and set that white balance to that card and it will pick up the color temp of the lights that you're shooting under for that custom white balance. I really want you guys to learn how to do that. That's gonna give you the best color calibration for your whites, really important. You'll also get an indicator on that display screen that you are in that custom white balance mode with the icon next to the face detection. Again, starting at neutral, we're gonna go into menu and we're gonna go into focus. You'll get a little window here where you can actually tap the area that you want to pull focus and it would auto focus for you. With the orange indicator, you can see that we've chosen manual focus and we can also use a function called peaking. This gives us a halo or an outline around what is in focus and you can choose the color of that as well. If you don't like that, you simply deactivate that by turning it off. These cameras are small. If we jump back into the menu, you can see you have an image stabilizer. We can go in there and play around with the different stabilization aspects of the camera to give you a little more control over smooth camera flow. Um, there's a standard, a dynamic, and you can turn it off. I tend to leave it at standard unless I'm moving quickly. I'm gonna go into dynamic for the stabilizer. So you can see you have good control over your focus and you can even stabilize the camera. Now that we've gone over some of the settings and some of the menus within the camera, let's show a couple other features that you're gonna to wanna to know as you get more acquainted with the Canon XA30. I'm gonna pan the camera around so you can see what I can see, tilt it down further so you can see the top of the camera. 
On the top of the camera, there's a handle. This handle is actually removable, but it's gonna stay intact when you guys have it out in the field. It has a record button on the handle, and you also have the record button on the back of the camera. It also has a rocker arm or a servo for zooming in or zooming out. The T for tight, the W for wide. And you have a shock mount for a shotgun microphone. That's pretty cool. All right, so let me tilt this back up. And then you can see as I pan around, this box right here on the top of the camera controls all of your audio sources that are coming in. You're gonna to wanna to know more about this and we will talk more about this as we get further into audio and how to bring in external microphones into this camera. Pretty nice. So those are some of the other functions. On the side of the body here, you'll notice that this is where you would input like an HDMI cable, your headphones, etc. Okay, that's a little door there for mounting uh, your cables. Next, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about focus. So focus is crucial on all of our film sets. It's one of those things you can't really fix in post. So all cameras have an auto focus or a manual focus mode, and we wanna really work the manual focus. I have the camera focused actually on its case, but it's soft in focus. And I'm gonna show you how to pull focus to that. There's a couple different modes in how to get into the focus. You can see on my LCD screen that, that MF stands for manual focus, and you can toggle between autofocus, instant autofocus, and manual focus, all right? So that's right on the LCD screen. We're gonna stay away from autofocus because we wanna be able to pull focus. There's that ring I mentioned just a minute ago. I'm gonna go soft on focus. See how now the image is soft? And in order to maybe pull focus without using the ring, something I like about this camera, I'm gonna go into function. I'm gonna go into the focus area right here. And now in that focus area, I can just tap the screen where I want the focus to pull. I'm gonna put it right on the label and you'll see that it's flashing until that target comes into focus. I really like that part of this camera. You can just touch focus. If you had multiple planes, you can touch the screen in those different planes to do a rack focus, focusing between those two planes. Pretty cool stuff. There's also a little wrench in here if you wanna turn on the peaking and you can see the peaking as you focus and things like that. Some people like it, some people don't. And you can turn it off here as well, all right? So I'm gonna X out of that. That's a nice little feature of the XA30 and actually with most of the newer Canon cameras for touch focus. Next, we're gonna talk about breaking the camera down. Now that we have wrapped our shoot, it's time to break down our gear. So let's break down the camera first. So again, I'm gonna open up the camera case. I've already have some stuff in here, the manual, the case contents card, the battery charger. I'm just pulling things out and the extra battery and my protective case for the SD card. So what we need to do is get the camera off of the sticks, the tripod. So with this particular tripod, the e-image as we're coming to find out, you have this release knob on the right hand side and then you have a safety button on the left-hand side and we simply just pull the camera backwards out of the head of the tripod. We have to get the plate off the bottom of the tripod. So again, I have my handy dandy little tool. I'm gonna loosen the 920 screw on the bottom of the plate. Let me drop this back in. The plate has been released from the camera. I'm gonna set the camera on a stable surface. I'm gonna seat the tripod plate back into the back of the head. Again, many students have just left the plate on the camera body, and now you have a tripod without a plate. Okay, so this camera doesn't have a lot of components. That's why we call it a run and gun. It's all in one. We also wanna make sure that we close that little lens cap inside, okay, to protect the lens. We have to get the battery off of the camera. You'll notice this little tab on the bottom. 
we need to push that in and pull the battery. It disengages the battery. And now we have the battery out. We want to open up the LCD screen, lift the door of where the dual SD card slot is, press the card to release it or eject it. We pull the card out, we shut the door, we close the LCD screen. We have removed the battery, we have removed the SD card. We close the lens cap. Let's get everything back in the case. So again, here's our plastic case for our SD card. We have a little slit in the top here for that. The camera sits nice and neat inside of here, just like so. The battery charger lives in the top and the two batteries live up here as well. Just like so. Then we're gonna put the manual in the camera. That's the way it should look when you return it to the mirror. We're gonna close the case. Now this is ready to take back in for your check-in. Okay, let's break down the tripod. We have this little handle that straps together. Open the case. You'll notice that it's empty, it has the straps, and we have that little protective cushioning for where the head lives inside, all right? One of the first things we need to do is release the lower legs. I'm gonna walk this down, I do a little circle to walk it down. I'm gonna tighten those legs once it's completely collapsed. As I come up with the tripod, you'll notice I'm pulling the spreader in to collapse the legs all the way in, right? Then what I'm gonna do is turn the pan handle in, take it down so it collapses right next to the legs and tighten that. It'll help stow it nice and tight. I'm gonna make sure all the knobs have been tightened back in. Now, I'm gonna put this into the case with the head at the foam packed in. Not all of our tripod cases are the same as I keep mentioning. Um, this one does have these two straps to help secure the tripod inside the case. And here's the one for the top of the head. I'm gonna lock that into place, all right? So there's your tripod inside the case. Let's close it. We're gonna close the handles together, just like so. We have our tripod. We have our camera. We're ready to check back in to the equipment room. And that will wrap up our how-to video on the Canon XA30. Thank you for watching.